What's up guys, thank you for joining. Today I'm gonna to talk about one of the hottest topics in Power BI, paginated reports, and guess what? I'm gonna teach you how to build one from zero, from scratch. So, let's do this. Before we start building our report, let's learn more about paginated reports. Like it says right here, paginated reports are designed to be printed and also shared. They are called paginated reports because they are formatted to fit well on a page, which makes sense. They display all the data in a table, even if the table spans multiple pages. I'm gonna share with you this link as well so you can explore more details about paginated reports. So there is good information there, okay? So now let's get started. The first thing you need to do here is download Microsoft Power BI Report Builder. And if we go to this website right here, I'm going to share with you this link as well. So you can download here the Microsoft Power BI Report Builder. Just select your language. By default it's English. Check out the details here about the program, system requirements as well. And then you are good to go. Hit download and automatically you can see right here, the program is downloading right now. So once it's done, just follow the steps and you will get the program installed on your computer. So I already did it. So it's right here. This is just a blank paginator report. You will have something like this, okay? Once you complete the steps. So the next step here is to create a configure a data source. And the first thing that you need to know here is your data source, right? For our particular case, we are using SQL Server, but there are different sources that you can use. So what you guys are seeing here is the SQL Server Management Studio window. And I already created a tutorial about how to connect to a SQL Server database. You might wanna see this. I wanna share with you the link as well. As you can see, I have this open right now. So we're gonna use this, okay? Let's minimize for now. And now let's start creating our data source, okay? What we wanna do here is right click on data sources and then add data source, which makes sense, right? And for our particular case, we're gonna name this Adventure Works, okay? 2020, there you go, and then it's coming from Microsoft SQL Server, so we are good there. Next step, hit build. And here, you need to have the server name. And let's go back to the SQL Server Management Studio. In order to get the server name, there's an option here called File. Hit this option, and there you go, here it is. So let's select this, Control C to copy. If you want, you can close that window as well. Go back to here. Control V, there you go. Refresh it, it's gonna take a few seconds here. It is thinking. Okay, so now you can select the database name. And here it is, we're gonna select AdventureWorks Data Warehouse 2020, test connection, and let's see what happens. Successful, okay, hit okay. And now hit okay here as well. Now guys, we have just added a data source. Once we have done this, the next step is to create and configure a data set. Okay, so the data set is coming from the data source. So right click here again, add data set. And you can name your data set as well. And remember when you're naming your data sets or the data sources, no spaces allowed, okay? For this particular case, we're gonna use internet cells. Okay, so data source here. We just installed this AdventureWorks 2020. Select that one. And here, you guys need to add the piece of code, the query that you are using to grab uh, data from the data source, okay? For this particular case, if we go back to here, I have right here, a piece of code that belongs to the fact internet sales 
if you want me I can close this again and then to show you how it works see right here databases I have three different databases and right here we have tables so we care about internet sales right click select top a thousand rows and then right here delete this piece of code and right here you are good to go select this piece of code control C and grab it and paste it here right control V there you go so that's what we need here we need a piece of code to grab data from this data source right okay so let's see if we validate this query let's see what happens successful so we are good to go hit ok boom you can see here the fields for that specific piece of code and then the name of the data set is called internet cells another cool thing about this is that you can create many data sets so we just created a piece of code for internet cells we can create for other tables that we might have here in this data source okay keep that in mind but for this particular case we're just focusing on one data set which is called internet cells the next step here is to create your first paginated report it is quite straightforward guys and let me show you how it works go to insert and here for now let's insert our logo okay image here right here let's name this image okay and here let's import all files and here it is let's select this image open hit ok boom there you go you can make adjustments let's put this on the top left corner and then let's adjust this text we can do this as well you can just start playing with this right so designing here the paginated report there you go you can add a title here if you want let's call this internet cells for now and let's start building our first paginated report go to insert again matrix insert matrix there you go let's make this a little bit bigger so we can play there you go okay so now let's add a couple of columns here right right and then here also another right there you go so we have here different columns right and you can make adjustments if you want as well it's just up to you but there you go the next step here is to add fields to this table if you see this option right here so this is where you can add fields right or columns how about sales order how about currency key how about customer key and then how about order quantity and then how about unit price see so that's what we have there and you can expand this if you want it looks so much better right okay i think we are good to go now so let's see how it works let's go to run here and let's see what happens I just want to make sure that this is working so it's thinking fingers crossed my friends boom there it is you can make any adjustments here for example the execution time we can adjust this real quick go back to design and then right here how about that one and then towards the left a little bit and let's see what happens run this again perfect that looks so much better go back to design 
And now we are guys ready to publish this to Power BI service. So before we publish this report to the web, to Power BI service, how about if we add a filter or maybe filters? For that particular case, we're gonna add parameters. So let's go to the data set name here, right click and then query. So what we're gonna do here is the following. So we're gonna add here a filter, okay? Check this out where and then let's use the currency key as a filter here currency key and they should be equal to you have to add here add currency key okay that's how it works and then let's hit okay and then automatically as you can see there is a parameter here called currency key there you go so now Let's see what happens. Let's run this again. So we don't see anything yet because we have to give a number here, a value. So currency key, how about if we get about 100? So let's hit view report and let's see what happens. Boom, there it is. So what we're doing here is we are just filtering this report based on the currency key 100. And then you can see just the data for that particular key. That's how it works. Then, like I said, you can also check the print layout here. In total, we have 438 pages. And then if you hit export, you have other options here as well. You can export this as PDF, Excel, Word, any options there, okay? Keep that in mind. So let's hit design. Like I said before, we are ready to publish this report and this is going to be the last step, okay? Let's hit publish and see what happens. In order to publish this report to Power BI service or the cloud, you need to have a license. So let me walk you through the licenses real quick. So you should have a premium per user license or a Power BI premium license. But lately, and this is new, in order to publish this report to the web, you can have a Power BI Pro license. So this is huge. Let me show you the article real quick. So go back to the article here. And then we see here the announcement that it happened a few weeks ago or a few days ago, right? Back in November 14, 2022. Announcing support for paginated reports in Power BI Pro. So this is huge, guys. So that's what we have to do here. And then you just need to select your Workspace, for this particular case, we're going to select Paginated Reports. This is the name of my workspace. Premium Capacity, if you can see right here, a diamond. So this means that this workspace have premium capacity. So we are good to go. So we can name this report. So Adventure Works 2020 if we want. And then we are ready to publish. So let's hit Publish. Success. Okay. Let's go back to the report. Let's select the workspace, paginary report. Here it is. So this is the report. And that's how it works, my friends. Guys, that's it for today. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If so, as always, please don't forget to subscribe. Leave your questions and comments below. And of course, share with your friends, right? Spread the knowledge with the world, my friend. Also, take a look at these tutorials, good tutorials as well, if you want to improve your Power BI skills. Alright guys, thank you very much for your time and see you in my next tutorial.